Welcome to Electron Line. Here's the example of our surface integral. We use a vector field defined here. We have the x component, the y component, and the z component of our vector field. We're going to multiply the vector field with an area here. It's a quarter circle in the x, y plane. The radius of the quarter circle is r sub naught, and here's a small little area element, dx times dy. Notice that if you use your right hand rule and you curl your fingers around the small little area element, your thumb will point outwards, which means the unit vector is pointing directly outwards at the board in the, well, that would be the positive z direction. The area element can be defined as dA sub z, which means projected onto the xy plane. And there's multiplied times the unit vector, which can also be written as dx times dy, and the unit vector is in the positive z direction. Now, integrating this over the surface, and we can put a little s underneath there because we're going to do a surface integral, it'll be the vector field multiplied times a small area integrated over the entire surface. Now, we can also write that in rectangular coordinates, which means that this can now be written as the x component of the vector field times the a sub x, the y component times the a sub y, and the z component times the a sub z. Notice that the definitions here for the a sub x, the a sub y, and the a sub z, these are projections of the dA, the small little area element, onto the yz plane, onto the xz plane, and onto the xy plane. Now notice the way I've drawn my area element, there's actually no projection onto the yz plane, and there's no projection onto the xz plane, there's only projection onto the xy plane. In other words, dA sub x, therefore, is equal to zero, and dA sub y is also equal to zero. Only this projection survives, which means that if I then integrate this over the surface, this is going to be the x component, which is y times z, multiply times dA, project onto the yz plane, which means that's going to be equal to zero, plus a sub y, which is z times x, multiplied times the projection of the area element, onto the xz plane, which is also 0, plus the z component, which is x times y, multiply times the dA sub z, which is the projection onto the xy plane, and that we do have, the projection on the xy plane is simply dx times dy. That is now going to become a double integral. We're going to integrate over the x and the y, which means that this is now equal to a double integral of x times y, dx dy, and we'll first we'll integrate over the, in the y direction, so we integrate from y equals 0 to y equals a point on the plane. So we're going to first integrate in this direction. The limits of integration is going to be from 0 to what y is equal to when I hit the curve right here, which means I'm going to take the equation of that curve and solve that for y. If I do that, I get y is equal to the square root of r sub naught squared minus x squared. Simply by moving the x to the other side, it becomes minus x squared and taking the square root of both sides, which means my limit here is going to be the square root of r sub naught squared plus, oh, not plus, but minus x squared. So let's do the first integral in the y direction. This is equal to the integral of x dx times y integrated is going to be y squared divided by 2, and the limits of integration are going to be from 0 to the edge of the curve, which is the square root of r sub naught squared minus x squared. When I plug in the lower limit, I get 0, so I don't have to worry about that. When I plug in the upper limit, I get the integral of x dx times, oh yes, I'm missing an x here. There's an x missing here. All right, continuing on, so plug in the upper limit and that squared, we get r sub naught squared minus x squared. And then we plug in the lower limit. Oh, I can't forget to divide it by 2. Plug in the lower limit, I get 0, which means that my next integral now is going to become, this is equal to the integral of, when I multiply this through, I get r sub naught squared times x minus x cubed times dx. Now the limits are going to be from x equals 0 to x equals r. We're going to integrate over the entire distance from there to there, and that would be r sub naught, so from 0 to r sub naught. 
Integrating this, I get the following. This is equal to r sub naught squared times x squared divided by 2. And I think I forgot my divided by 2 here, so let me put that out here. That doesn't need to be in the integral sign. So I can't forget divided by 2. So x squared over 2 minus x to the fourth over 4 and evaluate it from 0 to r sub naught. I also need my 1 half here. So let me put the 1 half in front. Okay, now evaluating. Again, when I plug in the zero limit, I get nothing. And plug in the upper limit, I get the following. This is equal to 1 half times. Plug in the upper limit, I get r sub naught squared, r sub naught squared. I get r sub naught to the fourth power divided by 2 minus r sub naught to the fourth power divided by 4. Subtracting r to the fourth power divided by 2, subtract r to the fourth power divided by 4, that gives me 1 half times r sub naught to the fourth power divided by 4, which means the final answer would be 1 8 r sub naught to the fourth power. And that would be the surface integral multiplying the vector field defined here over the surface, which is in the x, y plane defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals r sub naught squared. And there's a nice example of how to do surface integrals.